Midlands, the centre of Britain's engineering industry, the place where, from the days of the medieval smithies, engineering history has been made, and where it is still being made year by year. Birmingham and Coventry designers and craftsmen made these handsome veterans, and their sons, grandsons and great-grandsons are carrying on the tradition which it takes generations to create. For Midland skill is bred in the bone. However brilliant the designers, however cunning the craftsmen, perfection is only achieved by that extra something which, like an oak tree, cannot be hurried. Look at this Land Rover. It has pride of place in the Birmingham Museum because it was the first Land Rover ever made. A 1.6 litre model which attracted great interest at the 1948 Amsterdam Motor Show. Yes, the first. But because it was the product of a firm with half a century of automobile experience behind it, a job without snags. A job which proved itself from the moment it went into production as the world's most versatile and rugged four-wheel drive vehicle. <laughs> The Rover Company, at first, only planned a limited production of the Land Rover, 50 a week for five years. But even the company were surprised by the immediate and overwhelming demand for this virtually unbreakable machine. And in less than no time, the original production schedule was itself a museum relic. In the 10 years since the first Land Rover was exhibited, over 200,000 have been manufactured. And of that total, three out of every four have gone overseas, making the Land Rover Britain's most exported commercial vehicle. The Land Rover has been news from the beginning. In its second year, it was ordered by the British Army. Since 1955, it has been the Army's standard quarter-ton forward area vehicle and is now part of the equipment of the armed forces of a couple of dozen countries, from Ireland to Ecuador. And as for farms, there is literally no kind of farm in the world, from snow to sand, from pampas to paddy field, where the Land Rover has not proved itself absolutely irreplaceable. To go back even earlier than Land Rover number one, here are pictures of one of the original prototypes under trial. It had a wooden body and a central steering column. And the Rover Company's Solihull factory put it through its paces on every possible job, amending and adapting, correcting and improving, until they were satisfied it was ready for the public. And as their customers know from long experience, the Rover engineers take a great deal of satisfying. That's why Rover customers remain Rover customers. That's enough of museums and albums, for many of the 1948 Land Rovers are still doing a job of work and will doubtless be doing so for many years to come. Barbara Toy, an Australian authoress living in London, owns Pollyanna, one of the very early Land Rovers. Pollyanna has taken Barbara 140,000 miles through Africa and the Middle East and recently right round the world to places where not many white women would think of going alone. So, to its thousand and one other uses, the Land Rover can add the qualification of chaperone. Now, Barbara plans a Land Rover trip to Moscow, where, incidentally, one Land Rover has already been. Britain's most exported commercial vehicle. And it didn't take long to reach that status. In its first two years, the Land Rover earned five million pounds in foreign currency. That could only have been achieved by a vehicle which was, from the start, suited to every possible job in all possible conditions. Every type of Land Rover is in demand. Short chassis, long chassis, station wagon, left-hand drive, right-hand drive, petrol, diesel, according to the job to be done. And the Land Rover is its own ambassador. Sell a Land Rover to a man at the back of beyond, and within weeks, his neighbors will be wanting Land Rovers too. Of the Land Rovers exported in the past 10 years, Australia alone has taken more than 27,000, and that's about one in eight of all the Land Rovers produced. One single project uses Land Rovers by the hundred, the vast Snowy Mountain hydroelectric scheme in New South Wales. The Snowy Mountain project is a water conservation scheme as well as a new source of power, and it will be the biggest of its kind in the Southern Hemisphere, costing some 200 million pounds to build. A tremendous job in a huge and growing land, 
the sort of job where the sturdy Land Rover proves its value over and over again. Oddly enough, not many Australians, native-born Australians that is, work at Snowy Mountain. It's too high up for their choice. But for Scandinavian immigrants, it's a home from home, and large numbers of them are employed here. The Land Rover has no such preferences. Thermometer and barometer can say what they like. The Land Rover is at home in any place where there's a job of work to be done. It's hardly surprising, really, that Australia in particular has taken to the Land Rover. Above all, Australia is the pioneer land of today, with virgin country to be tamed, great construction works to be completed, and huge distances to be covered, often with no roads at all, or at best with rough tracks churned up into mud or dust. The outback is no place for finicky vehicles, for trucks which break down under rough treatment or which demand complicated maintenance. But the Land Rover is the pioneer vehicle par excellence, the vehicle which can go where once only horses could go, and very much farther and faster. There can hardly be a major hydroelectric scheme under construction anywhere in the world, outside the Iron Curtain, where Land Rovers are not playing their part. Besides the Snowy Mountain scheme, many are in use on Africa's biggest the Kariba Dam project in Rhodesia. And nearer home, they're doing the same job in Scotland. To meet Australia's demand, a new subsidiary company has been formed in Australia to build Land Rovers on the spot. Similar companies have been established in South Africa and Brazil, and Land Rovers are soon to be manufactured under license in Spain. And now back to England to introduce the fruits of 10 years of experience and vindication. The Land Rover Series 2. Without sacrificing any of the well-tried features, Rover engineers have produced a better looking, more comfortable vehicle, even better equipped to do whatever is asked of it. Let us show you over it. Anyone who's ever poured petrol from a can will appreciate this feature. Like the Series 1, the new Land Rover is made in petrol and diesel versions, and also in two sizes the regular short chassis with an 88-inch wheelbase and the long chassis, 109 inches. The tailboard has ingenious new quick-release catches designed to stay in position over the roughest of ground. The body, of course, is still made of rustless aluminium alloy with all exposed steel items heavily galvanized. The years have proved the value of this, for the alloy is resistant to such things as corrosive fertilizers and will stand up to all types of climate but the whole body has been given a smoother and more pleasing appearance, suitable to a multi-purpose vehicle which must be smart as well as workmanlike. Visibility has been improved on the long Land Rover, the rear window is larger and rounded quarter lights have been added. All windows are now of non-scratch glass. The doors have external handles and can be locked. The bonnet arrangement is more convenient than on the Series 1, making it easier to open, particularly in winter conditions. A single catch releases it from the front of the vehicle. And so we come to the heart of the matter, the engine. The new four-cylinder Rover two and a quarter liter petrol engine developed 77 brake horsepower, giving the long Land Rover 25 brake horsepower more than the two liter version. 
combined with the added comfort and convenience, that makes the newest of the Land Rovers an aristocrat among working vehicles. The redesigned seating is deeper and softer, improving driver and passenger comfort, which is also affected by the attention given to springs and shock absorbers. Little change was needed here, just minor alterations for greater smoothness, for the Land Rover suspension has long ago proved its worth. After careful thought, Rover engineers have decided to retain the use of beam axles, for experience has shown that their simplicity and strength are best suited to cope with the constant pounding on destructive terrain, which is all in the day's work for the Land Rover. Shock absorbers have been redesigned, and on the long Land Rover, progressive rate springs give two inches greater travel. They are mounted on hangers which have been brought forward for improved stability. The turning circle has been improved on both regular and long models. Yes, the Series 2 Land Rovers are an improvement over their predecessors, and also a complete vindication of the original design, for the improvements are in fact only refinements of the original idea. No basic alteration of any kind was either necessary or desirable. Science and craftsmanship bred in the bone. That is the secret of the finest vehicle that even the Rover Company has ever produced. 81 years ago, Rovers started making bicycles. 54 years ago, the first Rover car appeared on the road. Like a craftsman working through the years to his peak of skill, the Rover Company served its apprenticeship when cars were a novelty and has grown up with them. No company in the world knows more about them and few can parallel its contribution to the perfecting of the modern motor vehicle. Ask a Rover designer or craftsman which of the company's products gives him the greatest pride and he might have difficulty in answering. But the chances are that he would say the Land Rover. For here is a vehicle which was a pioneer and is still beyond dispute the finest of its type. What other vehicle in the world has for years been doing jobs as varied as farm work, exploring, big game hunting, towing and powering mobile machinery of all kinds, post hole digging, pumping water for circus elephants amongst other things, and locust control? What other works for armies, frontier guards, police and fire brigades, and acts as a mobile bank, a mobile surgery, or a mobile workshop as occasion demands? Ten years have proved the Land Rover can do all these things and more. When new jobs arise to be done, the Land Rover will find a way of doing them. And when an even better Land Rover is made, it will be made by the Rover Company.